Nick here, M0NTV, and welcome back to The Shack, and to another video, and apologies that I haven't posted anything since before Christmas, but, um, well, with Christmas, and then um, I had to have a little bit of routine surgery in hospital, I was just in and out, and that's all good now, um, but it did kind of take me out of action for a few weeks, um, so I'm back, <laughs> which is great, and um, what I'm want to do today is is kind of, I've been digging back into the basics actually recently and, and particularly into the whole business of what does it mean to modulate a carrier wave uh, and it's interesting when you think about it because broadly there's, there's three ways you can modulate a carrier wave you, know, you take your your message signal which could be your voice say through a microphone um, and you want to communicate it so you get a usually a higher frequency carrier wave and you want to um, uh, imprint on this carrier wave the essential information in your message signal and um, so what you can do uh, is you can change one of the three fundamental attributes of this carrier wave to do that so uh, one way you can do that is you can change the amplitude of your carrier wave so when the, the when the amplitude in your message signal goes up you can get the amplitude of your carrier wave to go up. Um, and that's amplitude modulation, AM. What you can do, of course, is you can not touch the amplitude of the, uh, the carrier and you can um, uh, frequency modulate your carrier. So within certain parameters, you know, um, when the, uh, if you shout loudly down the microphone, then the, it, it seems to compress a bit more. And, uh, and if you speak quietly, then it, the, the waves go. So you can, you can change the frequency in proportion to uh, the amplitude of your message signal. Or you can not touch either of those things and modulate the phase of the, um, the uh, carrier wave, uh, which is kind of a bit similar to modulating the frequency. But um, so, and, and that's the root of things like PSK31, phase shift keying, where you're shifting the phase of the, um, uh, of the, uh, of the wave. So, um, yeah, amazing, really. But what I want to do today is to dig into the, probably the, the, the oldest and most familiar, which is AM, amplitude modulation. Spurred on by the fact that I've actually just been um, invited to, to speak, well, last year I was invited to speak, and uh, I'll be doing it later on this year, to the AM Society. Um, so I thought I need to up my game a bit <laughs> when it comes to because all my experience of modulation has been double sideband suppressed carrier, which is what all my modulators uh, produce. And then, of course, I take my double sideband signal um, with its suppressed carrier, I put it through a narrow uh, crystal filter, and I get single sideband, upper or lower, depending on what I'm building for. But I thought I'd have a play and see the relation between you know, a double sideband suppressed carrier and full carrier AM, and, and can you turn one into the other, and what do they look like, you know, in the frequency domain and, and, and in the uh, time domain. So what I've done is I've built a couple of different AM modulators, um, and we're going to put them through the paces, and you'll see how they work, and, and, and I'm messing around with some of the parameters and see what difference it looks like. I always find I understand things if I can see them with my own eyes and see the differences that things make. So this is not a grand scheme for an AM transceiver, but but you can very easily build these little AM modulators and, um, and you know, transmit a bit of very, very low power <laughs> um, uh, AM, um, certainly from one corner of the, the room to the other. Um, so I hope you find this interesting and uh, without further ado, we'll get on with it. So this is the first uh, little um, modulator that I want to show you. Um, so this is a design that comes from Fez Electronics uh, on YouTube. So just do a, a search for him. He does some absolutely brilliant stuff. Um, and he does a lot of things um, with modelling in uh, LT Spice as well, which is really, really useful. 
Um, and so I just took a part of his circuit, just the, the modulator part. Um, and the only, I think, difference with my design is you'll see down here um, on, the, uh, on the right, um, I put a little trim pot in because that tr this, this is where the audio input comes in here. So this is the um, your uh, your carrier, the local oscillator comes in here. The audio input comes in here, and then your modulated uh, AM signal comes out here via a matching transformer. Oh, I think I added the matching transformer as well. Um, and uh, I'll show my uh, uh, design on screen in just a second. Um, now the interesting thing is. Uh, is that actually this little the reason I put this little trim pot in here is that that actually controls the the modulation index uh, sometimes called the modulation depth now actually these two terms are actually describing the the same thing it's just that the modulation index is a number between 0 and 1 0 meaning no modulation at all and 1 meaning maximum modulation uh, or 100% modulation, I should say. Um, the modulation depth is simply that same um, uh, index, but expressed as a per, uh, as a percentage. So you know, 50% um, modulation, 70% modulation. Um, and the way you achieve a different modulation depth is by varying the amplitude of your your um, message signal, your audio input there, and that just enables you to to tweak that accordingly. And you can get get some different results. So it's very simple. Just one transistor, just um, uh, 2N3904. Uh, and uh, yeah, a few resistors, capacitors, and uh, and that's it. Um, so that this is the one we're going to try out first. And, uh, and we'll put it through uh, its paces. Right, well, here is the test setup. So here's my little uh, modulator. And uh, so down here you can just about to see is the signal generator and so what I've got is I've got uh, my carrier signal one megahertz signal at 600 uh, millivolts peak to peak it's coming in here my message signal my audio signal in my case which is a one kilohertz sine wave is coming in here and that's I think that's um, 100 millivolts uh, peak to peak and then the output is here through a matching transformer and uh, and then that is being connected to the spectrum analyzer so let's have a little look uh, now at the spectrum analyzer screen uh, in, in a bit more detail so here is the screen or at least because my flashy spectrum analyzer has got its own LAN in it so um, uh, this this is the computer screen but showing exactly what is on the uh, the actual physical screen of the spectrum analyzer um, and so you'll see there the uh, classic um, AM signal in the frequency domain so you see you've got your two uh, upper and lower sidebands and the the carrier there in the middle um, more powerful than, than the sidebands. Um, and now the only real control you've got here um, is to vary the power of your message signal. In my case, my one kilohertz audio signal coming in. And that will, in fact, vary uh, the, the modulation uh, depth uh, modulation index that we we talked about before. So just have a, a little look. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, experiment by um, cranking up the power a bit of that audio signal, the modulating signal that we're putting in, and see what a difference um, that makes. All right. So I'm cranking it up now. You should be able to see now. You can see those sidebands coming right up. So there's more and more power now in those sidebands but what you can also see is look at those harmonics as well which are which are growing uh, up on on the side there so um let me take it down again 
to where we had it before. Right, so it's a bit of a trade-off really be between getting um, as much power as you can in the side bands, uh, but you can't have too much. Um, and there needs to be, uh, even if you're a hundred percent modulated, um, that means there's a six dB difference between the uh, the carrier and the the side bands, and we'll perhaps see that. Now you can push it beyond a hundred percent modulation, um, but then you're into all kinds of distortion, and you'll find. This is why you have to have some kind of a, um, a limiter, really, before because if you if you push it too far, um, uh, if you if you're pretty close to the to the point of, of distortion, um, even just speaking loudly in a microphone would would push you beyond that, and and you'd get um, you'd get distortion. So uh, yes, yeah, so you've got to be careful with that. But anyway, um, it it works. Um, let me show you what it looks like um, in the uh, time domain. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the same exercise now, uh, but you can see it uh, in the time domain. Now, if I can just pause this for a minute. Okay, so you can see there we've got hardly any modulation depth at all because this is the, the, the extent of the modulation and this is where it's unmodulated, so there's, there's not a lot um there's not a lot that's a little bit better um but just see what happens when i repeat that same exercise then so we're at uh, 100 millivolts peak to peak on the uh, the audio input and if i crank the audio input up a bit can you see what's happening so it's narrowing down so this zero crossing point now is narrowing. So we're modulating far more of the carrier signal. This corresponds to those uh, increased uh, sidebands that we saw in relation to the, and to the carrier. Um, and so you're modulating more. So it will mean that you've, you've got more power in the sideband. So your signal will sound um, louder, stronger. Um, but if you push it too far, um, then you're increasing uh, the amount of uh, distortion that's uh, going to creep in as well. And uh, but yeah, so yeah, you can see it's narrowing right down. Um, so so that's how it's done. Um, right. Okay. Well, let's just um, do a real world test then, and um, just show you that it does in fact actually work. Right. To test, it's working. I thought rather than listen to a one kilohertz sine wave, which gets a bit boring after a while, um, I would plug in my phone and uh, we'll have a little blast of an old uh, Solder Smoke podcast. So let's listen to, to Bill and Pete. And uh, incidentally, if you don't subscribe to the Solder Smoke podcast, you really should because it's excellent. Um, so all I've got on the end here is just a little antenna. And this is hardly going to... Uh, be my finest DX because I'm transmitting a full 20 centimeters. Wow, um, <laughs> this is very QRP, QRP, P, 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 um, to my um, uh, SDR Play RSP2, which is connected here via a ridiculously oversized USB repeater cable to um, my Mac. And you can see already uh, there is the, the carrier. Okay, so turn the volume up a bit and I'm going to press play. It's a great time to be a home brewer. Yeah. And yeah, and I, and I think you're right about advancing the art. I wish I, wish I could do more of it. I, I, I find myself having difficulty advancing into the 1970s. <laughs> but, but I, but you know, but I try, and we all we all try. But I think you're absolutely right, and I'm really glad that that that, that, that Jack Potom has and and uh, Peter and Peter have, have and Al Peters have, have have written this up because when they write it, it 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 it, it, it continues. So, so you can hear, um, yeah, it it certainly works, and um, and we're getting um, um, Bill and Pete there um, on AM. 
Now, the second AM modulator that I built, well, I say I built it. I didn't really build it because I'd already built it because the second method uses a regular diode ring double balanced mixer. And you might think, hang on a minute, how on earth can you use a double balanced mixer as an AM modulator? Because by definition, it, it nulls out the carrier and you want the carrier. Well, yes, absolutely it does, unless you unbalance your double balanced mixer. <laughs> and if you unbalance it, you get carrier. And people have known this for a long time. Pete Giuliano uses it on on some of his rigs uh, to, to unbalance it, just so that you get a um, a carrier for 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 a tuning uh, purposes. Um, but the person who who really put me onto this um, in terms of generating full carrier AM um, was Alan Walkey W two A E W. And uh, I mean, Alan produces some you know fantastic videos on all kinds of um, electronic and and RF based projects and and uh, yeah, fantastic. So he's somebody else you ought to subscribe to. Um, but he was asked a question about whether you could produce AM um, with uh, with a double balanced diode ring mixer. And the the secret, without you know, I mean, go and watch his video. But spoiler alert, um, it involves injecting a DC offset into the IF port, a DC bias, um, which unbalances the mixer and gives you a carrier. Um, and um, I will demonstrate this. But So all I really built um, was, was this, um, which is just a very, very simple little circuit here, um, which uh, is just a little capacitor and uh a trim pot and that's it and and so i can control via the uh, uh the the trimmer how much dc offset um comes in and and then that mixes with the uh uh the audio signal um that coming in and then then it comes out here so this is the port here that connects then to the um if port and uh yeah, so let me set all this gear up and I'll show you how it works. Right, so here is the setup. So uh, I've had to tweak the, the drive values a bit because this is a diode ring mixer, so um, and passive. Um, so it needs more drive. So it's getting 1.4 volts peak to peak on the SIG gen. And into the IF port, um, we've got uh 200 millivolts peak to peak of a one kilohertz sine wave via this um dc bias injector that i'm calling it uh, which is has no bias at the minute so it's just going straight through um and uh and then the other end uh is uh connected to the oscilloscope so let's have a look what's on the scope so no no bias at all um, let's put it around here or some kind. And if I just stop this now, now look at that. That is about as perfect double sideband suppressed carrier as you'll see. And it's the classic shape, of course. And, and there is no carrier virtually no, because the zero crossing point is just about zero. Um, so yeah, that's, that's properly um, uh, modulated double sideband suppressed carrier and uh, so uh, let's see what that looks like I'm sure you're familiar with it but uh, in the frequency domain on the uh, spectrum analyzer so no surprises there you'll see there's a tiny little bit of carrier just coming through I mean way down in the weeds um, and uh, I could average this out so it would be smoother, but I don't want to do that because in just a second um, I'm going to switch the bias on and you will see the difference that that makes. So um, this is what, you know, we produce all the time um, and we would usually just filter out one of those sidebands and we call it single sideband. Um, but if we are to inject 
uh, a DC offset, and it doesn't need to be a lot. It's just a, f a few hundred millivolts, um, if that, of, of DC offset, which is why I put that um, trim pot in there so I could accurately kind of dial it in um, to get uh, uh, your carrier. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to switch on the power to the, the offset injector. And wow, there it is. So you'll see you've now got a whooping great big carrier there and also some um, other sidebands, some harmonics there as well. And um, yeah, so that makes uh, a big difference. And if you uh, vary the DC offset, you can control um, the, the height of that carrier basically so you're controlling really the um uh, uh the, the the modulation index um you can also uh do it by varying the the strength of the um the audio input so if i just tweak that as i have been doing you'll see and if i reduce it you see the those the harmonics go down but also the the strength of the um, sidebands goes down and so the, the modulation index, the modulation depth decreases and if I crank it back up to what it was before um, you'll see we get uh, more power in the sidebands but then we also have to contend um, with greater distortion uh, as well. So let's now just have a look what that looks like on the oscilloscope. So here we have what we had before. So that's the uh, the double sideband suppressed carrier. And I'm just going to switch on the DC offset. And it's turned out. Nice. Now, you can see, wow. You, you can really see how, sorry, look at that, that carrier now, wow. So you, <laughs> your zero crossing point is, is long gone. Um, and, and that's the difference of, of, of AM. Um, uh, now I'm just gonna um, take this off, so it's gonna leap around a bit, but do that same exercise once again of turning the AF up. And you can see it narrowing off again. See? So it's narrowing down and you can just keep repeating that. Um, but it is a, a constant compromise between having more power in your sidebands and having to contend with more distortion. Um, but just for completeness sake, let's, um, let's put the solder smoke guys um, through uh, this uh, modulator as well. So let's hear uh, the uh, second modulator. I think it's 32 bucks. Get the book. Buy, buy the book from these guys. It's right there. And I actually, have, I actually have the book. The book displayed. So if you want, you just click on the book there from the Sarasno blog, and Bob will be your uncle. Yeah, and we, we found out that in, if you're in New Zealand, it's $65. Now, I'm not sure how 65 New Zealand dollars is equate to 32 US dollars, but that's not like a bigger number to me. Hey, Pete, can you stick around for mailbag? I know you got to do this. Yes, yes. All right, man. Right. It's time for uh, for mailbag. We've got, a, we've got a pretty good, extensive... So, uh, there it is, and... Um, yeah, and you could hear me just uh, tweaking the, the audio input just on the phone, really, just to stop it uh, clipping or, or, or whatever. And, uh, yeah, that's something you've got to watch out for. But, yeah, clearly um, it works. Well, there you go. Um, and I think, for me, probably the biggest takeaway of all this um, has been tweaking that audio um, level and varying the modulation depth. And... Just the the fact that you know, even when I'd got those sidebands up to a hundred percent modulation depth, even then the carrier is six dBs 
bigger. Um, and it's that realization of, of something that I've known, you know, um, for, for ages, I guess, just how efficient single sideband is compared to AM. Because 6dB is, is a factor of four. So when you think about your AM signal, you know, half of your power is going in the carrier and then a quarter in each sideband. Um, so, you know, if you've got a, a, a 10 watt um, AM signal, you know, five watts is in the carrier and then only two and a half watts in each sideband. Whereas a, a 10 watt um, single sideband uh, signal is 10 watts, you know, so you can see 75% more uh, uh, efficient. Um, but it's interesting, and, um, and just the relationship between double sideband suppressed carrier and, and just with a bit of DC offset can produce uh, full carrier um, uh, AM. So anyway, I hope you found this of some interest, and I hope perhaps um, uh, a few people will have some fun and, and uh, build some AM modulators and, uh, and get transmitting from one side of the room <laughs> to the next. You remember, you, my DX, remember, is 20 centimetres, you've got to beat that. And um, But until next time, look after yourselves. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. 73.